This is Joe Biden, the resident of the United States. As you may know by now, Biden has been immersed into a scandal of his own making. But to make sure that everyone is caught up on the scandal, let's go back into history a little bit. On January 9th, CBS reported that classified items, some labeled top secret, dating back to when Joe Biden was the vice president, had been found in a closet at the Penn Biden Center for Diplomacy and Global Engagement in Washington, D.C. The following day, Biden was forced to address the situation and read from a prepared statement. People know I take classified uh, documents and classified information seriously. When my lawyers were clearing out my office at the University of Pennsylvania, they set up an office for me, a secure office in the Capitol. So Biden is claiming a couple of things here. First, to take the sting out of the fact that classified documents were being stored where they weren't supposed to be stored, he's claiming that the Penn Biden Center's office was secure. However, according to Title 32, Section 2001.43, Biden's private office doesn't seem to meet even the most basic requirements to store classified documents. But even if it did meet federal standards, Biden wasn't supposed to have those classified documents in his possession in the first place. So, a moot point. Second, he claims that his lawyers set up the office, which means it's not Joe Biden's fault. Blame the law offices of Covington and Burling or whoever. I was briefed about this discovery and surprised to learn that there were any government records that were taken there to that office. Even though they were his classified documents found in his office and contained in an envelope marked VP Personal, he was surprised. Yeah, sure. Uh, they found some documents in a box in a locked cabinet, or at least a closet. I don't know for sure about anything, but I was just reading what they wrote for me. But I don't know what's in the documents. I've my lawyers have not suggested I ask what documents they were. Why? You're supposedly the President of the United States. You're allowed to see classified information. What's the planned defense supposed to be? I've never seen those documents before in my entire life. It must have been planned. <laughs> and Biden planning on using that excuse is entirely plausible. Because Joe Biden has never taken responsibility for anything politically in his entire life. Anyway, when it came to Joe Biden having classified documents in his possession illegally, the media wanted to make clear that it was, it was just a small number. They say it's fewer than a dozen documents. A small number of documents. I'm told there were fewer than a dozen documents. The classified documents are small in number. A small number of classified documents. A small number of documents. You know, it appears to be a small number of documents. In terms of this case, we're looking at roughly 10, we're told. Mm. Uh, there are only a handful of these classified documents. Don't worry, America. Joe Biden only had a handful of classified documents. It's almost like he didn't have any. Especially when you compare how many classified documents the orange man had. There's a question of scale. Trump is accused of hoarding hundreds of classified documents. More than 300 classified documents uh, at Mar-a-Lago versus uh, fewer than a dozen documents here. A relatively small number of documents in comparison to the hundreds of documents that were found at Mar-a-Lago. 300 documents as opposed to 10, including a love letter for, from Kim Jong-un. Anyone with any amount of brain cells knows these are not completely equivalent purely because the volume. Uh, there are important differences here, obviously, in terms of the scale and the number of documents. When you look at this situation and that of Mar-a-Lago, mm -hmm. there's a difference in both scope mm -hmm. and scale. Mm -hmm. This is a much more limited uh, incident, right? We're talking right. about 10 documents. Joe Biden took around 10 to 12 documents that were just, that were, yes, top secret, but secure um, compartmentalized information. That was Washington Post reporter and NBC News contributor Jacqueline Almaney, who thinks the SCI, which stands for Sensitive Compartmented Information, means secure compartmentalized information, a thing that does not exist. Secure um, compartmentalized information. So the media is downplaying Biden's document scandal by comparing it to Trump's handling of his documents, because in their eyes, what Trump did was somehow much, much worse. 
This case is different than the documents case and that situation that was found at Mar-a-Lago. This discovery appears to be very different from what happened at Mar-a-Lago. Very different in quantity and duration from what Donald Trump refused to return from his Mar-a-Lago club. There is a difference between the former president's situation and this one. Because <laughs> there are some perhaps differences here. Yeah. That, yeah. that there are differences in what happened. Yes. I want to be clear, the facts are different than the Trump case. But there are key differences between this and the case involving former President Trump. Now, the way uh, that this was done, I think, is quite different. It looks like former President Trump, I think it's pretty clear by now, intentionally uh, took these documents, intentionally kept them away. And He's right. They are very, very different. This is not the same as the situation we saw with Donald Trump. It's completely different from the Mar-a-Lago case. So these things seem like two very different incidents. There's a big difference here. Some would say this is apples and oranges. There are clear differences here in how this president is handling it. But the storage and the approach to this is completely different. Uh, but the, the differences here are stark and many. It can't be stated enough. These are two very different cases. It is different, obviously, than the Trump case. One of these things is not like the other. But these two cases, though some similar, Joe, are not the same, not even close. These cases so far appear to be apples and oranges. I, I would say it's, it's like the difference between an accidental fender bender and deliberately driving your car into a crowd of people. So with Biden, it was an accident, equivalent to a fender bender. But with Trump, it was equal to vehicular homicide. Damn you, Donald Trump! So after it was leaked to the press that classified documents were found at the Penn Biden Center, the White House went into damage control. Here's Biden's press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre. Uh, he said that he seriously, uh, he, he takes this seriously when it comes to classified uh, documents, when it comes to information that is classified, uh, and also when it comes to classified, he takes classified documents very seriously, and how he respects and truly uh, uh, respects and takes this very seriously. He, again, he believes that uh, classified documents and information should be taken seriously. He takes them seriously uh, and how he sees this as a serious matter when it comes to uh, classified documents and information. He takes classified documents and information seriously. Well, Karine Jean-Pierre is right about one thing. Joe Biden does take classified documents and classified information seriously because the next evening, NBC News reported that an additional batch of documents had been discovered in a location separate from the Penn Biden Center. And it would eventually be revealed that this batch was found in the garage in Biden's home in Wilmington, Delaware. Classified material next to your Corvette. What were you thinking? Let me, uh, look, I'm going to get a chance to speak on all this, God willing, soon. But as I said earlier this week, people, and by the way, my Corvette's in a locked garage. OK, so it's not like you're sitting out in the street. So the but anyway. Yes, as well as my Corvette. You have said repeatedly, the president has said he takes classified documents very seriously. If that's the case, why were these classified documents being stored in his garage? Look, again, um, and not just me, he has said this. You have heard the president say this twice already, um, and he's said this before, classified documents uh, and information. He takes that very seriously. What I can say for sure when it comes to this uh, specific issue about uh, classified documents, about classified information, he takes that very seriously. He did not know, right? He did not know the records were there. Oh, please. Not even the press is that gullible. I mean, it's one thing to blame lawyers who set up an office, but who are you going to blame for putting documents in your own garage? The ghost of Bo Biden? When you saw the photograph of the top secret documents laid out on the floor at Mar-a-Lago, what did you think to yourself looking at that image? How that could possibly happen. How one, anyone could be that irresponsible. So remember folks, when you put documents in a small locked room within a locked storage room, complete with 24-7 surveillance, it's irresponsible. 
But when you throw them next to your car... The president has said he takes classified documents and information very seriously. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I just want to make sure that this is understood, that he takes this very seriously. Yes. But again, this is something that the president takes very seriously. And again, he takes this very seriously when it comes to classified information, when it comes to uh, um, uh, classified documents. The president takes this very seriously. He does. He said this twice. He said it twice, guys. Very serious, that Joe Biden. Now, the issue with repeating the same bullshit response instead of answering questions, well, that's a problem. Because if there's one thing that the White House press corps will push back on, it's transparency. Or the lack thereof. The first set of documents were found in November at the Penn Biden Center here in Washington. Mm -hmm. But why did it take until yesterday and until this morning, apparently, for whoever it was to inform Robert Lausch that that final document was found. Was that because there were press reports earlier this week? Again, and there's... the hope was that nobody would find out? I mean, yeah, it's blatantly obvious. You talk about we are being transparent. Who's we and what is the definition of transparent in this case? Is it the lawyers being transparent legally with the archives and the Justice Department? Or is it the White House writ large being transparent with the general public? So number one, and I've said this multiple times already, we take this very seriously. The president takes this very seriously. And not, and, and, and so I can finish here. Um, what has been transparent in this as well is that the White House counsel has let, has laid out uh, in detail on Monday to all of you. everything, Kareen, and you know that. And Ed O'Keefe is right. The statements from the White House counsel create more questions than answers. Do you acknowledge that the fact that the White House did not reveal this to the public, despite the fact that you've known about it for months, undercuts the president's promise of being transparent with the American people? But, we, but here's the thing. They were transparent. There was, there, there was transparency in doing what you're supposed to do when these, when these items were discovered. Not with the American people. Look. We, I am here standing in front of you answering these questions, right? The president took two questions this week on this. First off, obviously, Kareen isn't answering any questions. And, and then on top of that, we're supposed to be impressed that Biden took two whole questions? That's as many as he answers during any given week. Second, correspondents like Kristen Welker and James Rosen are right. Biden and the White House have not been transparent with the American people. Here's Chris Christie on the matter. Why did they wait to tell us? I mean, they knew this before midterms. Yeah, six days before. Right, six days before. So should they have come out and said, whoa, wait a minute, everybody. Well, of course, well, well, if you're Joe Biden who says, I must be transparent, Donald Trump's not, who made that decision? Ron Klain make that decision? Who made the decision not to disclose? Not to disclose. Did Ron Klain make the decision? Did the president make the decision? Who made the decision to not tell the American people six days before an election? And if Donald Trump had not told people six days before an election, what would the conversation be about right now? I guarantee you it would be about cover-up. Fact check true. If Trump tried to pull this crap, House Democrats would have immediately introduced articles of impeachment. So on January 19th, Biden was in California talking about disaster recovery, and a reporter had the audacity to ask the resident about classified documents. You know, the only, I, I will answer the question, but here's the deal. You know, what quite frankly bugs me is that we have a serious problem here we're talking about. We're talking about what's going on and the American people don't quite understand why you don't ask me questions about that. No, the American people just want to know why the White House didn't reveal that there were classified documents found in your home. But having said that, what's your question? Do you have any regrets that you did not reveal the existence of the documents back in November before the midterm? Hang on, okay? Look. So he's visibly annoyed that a reporter would dare ask a non-disaster recovery question. But at the same time, he has a written statement all ready to go. As we found, uh, we found a handful of documents were failed, uh, were filed in the wrong place. Don't worry, America. They were failed in the wrong place. <laughs> no big deal. And then there's that description again. A handful of documents 
At this point in the scandal, it was estimated that Biden had at least 20 pages in his possession. Objectively, that's not a handful. I think you're going to find there's nothing there. I have no regrets. I'm following what the lawyers have told me they want me to do. It's exactly what we're doing. So if there is no there there, then why do you need lawyers telling you what to do and what not to do? Why not be forthcoming to the American people? There's no there there. Thank you. But it turns out that there was, in fact, more there there. Because on January 20th, the FBI finally searched Biden's home. And you're not going to believe it, but they found even more classified items. And this time, some of those items were from Biden's days in the Senate, which is a problem. Because any classified documents that Joe Biden viewed while he was a senator are not supposed to be removed from the Capitol. According to reporting by The Hill, the vast majority of the time, lawmakers must go to a sensitive compartmented information facility, also known as a SCIF, to read documents. However, on rare occasions, they can have documents brought to their office to be viewed if it is considered appropriate for them to do so. According to one former Senate GOP aide, an intelligence staffer will put the document in a special briefcase, which would then be handcuffed to their wrist. Upon arrival, the intelligence staffer would clear the room, save for the lawmaker, and show the document to them one page at a time. After each page is read, it is placed back into a bag, and upon completion, the handcuff briefcase containing the document is returned. In other words, members of Congress are only allowed to view this info in a skiff or in the presence of an intelligence staffer. And if that's the case, how was Senator Biden able to get it out of the Capitol and into his home in Delaware? Here's the chair of the House Intelligence Committee, Mike Turner. With President Biden, when he was vice president and then also senator, you have him over you know, a series of decades taking classified documents home, including what we're learning now is uh, his own notes from classified sessions and, and briefings. I can't um, imagine, which is what I said before, I can't imagine a circumstance where anyone would believe that they need to have them in their home. And he clearly was taking them repeatedly um, on the train back home and you know, putting them in boxes in his garage. That, that repeated action is certainly a, a concerning. So everything that Mike Turner said is correct. But Martha Raddatz, who is essentially an operative for the Democrat Party, just had to be argumentative. But the overall Do, do you have evidence that it was a repeated that accent? These are classified. Sir, do you have evidence or, you, you or you any facts reported, about the train, you know for instance? What you actually have reported yourself that some of these documents relate back to when he was a senator um, and some of these documents relate to, to the time when he was vice president. That's over several decades and over a great deal of time. And he famously tells us he, he was on the train going from Washington, D.C. to his house. Uh, we know they didn't just fly there on their own. He would have had to have taken them. And speaking of the classified documents in Biden's possession, well, we don't know the exact number because the National Archives, the DOJ, the Biden administration, and of course Joe Biden himself will not divulge that information. Here's White House Counsel spokesman Ian Sams. Can you give us a sense of how many classified documents we are now talking about total across all three locations? Sure, it's a good question. And, and actually the answer to it is a little bit complicated because of this point that I'm making about the integrity of an ongoing Justice Department investigation. The Justice Department is going to be looking at all sorts of questions like that throughout their investigation. We want to be very, very careful to be respectful of the integrity of that investigation, to not speak too much about the underlying contents and materials, uh, especially things that we may not know all the answers to. Oh, my brain hurts. And so the reason that we may not know the answers to these questions is because you're not giving us the answers. What, at this point, what is the total number of documents bearing classified markings that have been turned up as part of the That's a good question. I think that that's probably a more appropriate question for the Justice Department. I don't want to characterize sort of what they're reviewing and how they're going through all that. And the DOJ isn't saying anything either. So let's ask Kareen. Uh, Kareem, what is the current number of documents bearing classified markings that have been found in the president's residences and offices? I would refer you to the White House Counsel's office. Oh, Ian just declined to comment on that as well. Just, um, there you uh, go. You got your answer. Wow. F*** you, Kareem. Now, what I think is really telling about the White House's response to all this 
is the language being used when referring to each tranche of the discovered classified material. Let's take a quick look. According to Richard Sauber, special counsel to the resident, on November 2nd, a small number of documents with classified markings were discovered at the Penn Biden Center. Although, according to reporting, it was under a dozen. Then, on December 20th, a small number of classified documents were found in Biden's Wilmington garage and in an adjacent room. Then, a few weeks later, on January 11th, 2023, six pages of classified material were discovered at Biden's home. Then, on January 20th, 2023, the FBI recovered six items consisting of documents with classification markings. So what are these items exactly? Are they folders? Binders? Boxes? And how many documents were in each item recovered? Well, if I had to make a prediction, I'd say that it's going to be at least 100 documents total. But what do you think? Please post your guess in the comments below. With that said, there doesn't seem to be any legal issue stopping Biden from revealing the exact number. And that's not something they'll do because they're trying to cover it all up. Most transparent administration, my ass. And then in an inadvertent gift to Joe Biden, it was reported that former President Mike Pence had found a small number of classified documents in his Indiana home, which is ironic because... Let me ask you, as we sit here in your home office in Indiana, did you take any classified documents with you from the White House? Uh, I, I did not. You f***ing moron. One source who was briefed on some of the classified documents told CNN that based on what they were told, there was nothing particularly unusual in the papers and described the classification markings as on the lower level. There was no mention of documents with SCI or SAP markings, which are two designations of some of the most sensitive classified material. Now, it's possible that Pence's documents were on the lower end of classification importance. However, the media and Democrat operatives took it even further. You know, we don't know the nature of the, uh, of the, of the classified documents from President Biden and former, former Vice President Pence. It could have been a schedule, could have been a light. In other words, the documents that Pence and Biden had in their possession might have just been schedules. And sure, there's no evidence to support that, but as a professor of African American studies at Princeton, Eddie Gloud is MSNBC's foremost expert on classified intel. <laughs> but seriously, the media and Democrat operatives jumped on the opportunity to make excuses for Joe Biden. It's not that Biden stole and mishandled documents when he was a senator or vice president and then left them in his garage. No, it's the system's fault. We've been talking after the Biden situation and now with Pence about the the larger factors at work here, which is a massive overclassification. Overclassifying information. We do have a problem with overclassification. Overclassification. Maybe there's overclassification. Everybody knows that there is massive overclassification in the U.S. government. There is an overclassification problem. The overclassification of documents. There still is overclassification. S simply, there's too much. There is too much classified data. What about the potential issue of overclassification, for example? There is certainly overclassification. And I, some I, of these documents are, you know, they turn out to be public information, but they're still marked classified. And the question becomes whether or not some of these documents objectively are or should have been classified in, at whatever level they're classified. We're being told they're classified. We don't know if, when, no. if it's like classified, classified, yeah. or just, you know, classified. And, and They'll classify a ham sandwich if they need to. Of course, all of this is conjecture, designed to try and make Biden look like a victim of overclassification. Oh, and then there's this bullshit. There are many examples of current former government officials taking inadvertently or intentionally classified documents home. What this shows is it, there's a problem with the system. But in these Biden and Pence situations, what's really clear is we have a broken system here. This is clearly a problem that is one um, that is definitely about classification of documents and how they're handled in a broad way. Let's be really honest. It happens every day, probably. Happens actually 
probably more than we mm -hmm. know about it. This is this happens. Look, this thing's happen. This thing happens kind of all the time. Except that these things don't happen all the time because Joe Biden had classified documents from his Senate years that should have never been in his possession. Never. The lack of curiosity from the media regarding why Biden had them or how he got them out of the Capitol or how many years he actually had them in his possession is the epitome of media bias towards Democrats. Anyway, that's it for now. Follow me on Twitter at Don't Walk Run and be sure that you're still subscribed to the channel. As always, I hope to see you next time. If there is next time.